Alright guys, welcome back to another video here. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I tie my green weenies with the red hotspot. Super simple. A lot of you guys have been asking for some more fly tying videos and simple ones at that. So we're going to go ahead and get into it. Before we get started though, make sure to hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this in future. And leave a like to let me know that you guys like the videos. And let me know in the comments what your guys' favorite summertime patterns are or how you tie your green weenies or anything like that. I don't know where I originally saw this red hotspot, but I just know that the red hotspot on the green weenie, that was like one of the first flies that I started catching wild browns on. And it's sort of stuck with me ever since. So all of my green weenies that I tie, I don't tie them without the red hotspot. If it's with a bead, I use the hotspot. And if it's without a bead, I just put a red head on it. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the materials here that we're gonna use. The first thing you're gonna need is six aught red thread. You can use eight aught or whatever you have, as long as it's red, specifically for this fly. And then you're gonna use a small or micro fluorescent green chenille. And the hook we're using is a size 10 Orient Sun 5240 and a size 3.8 millimeter gold tungsten slotted bead. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into tying it. All right, so to start to fly off here, like we always do, we're gonna go ahead and get our hook put upside down in the vise, just so we can easily slip the bead on and then we'll rotate it over. Get that in there secure. We're gonna go ahead and start our red thread at the beginning of the fly here and just work our way backward to about the bend of the hook. And then you can come in and snip off the excess thread there. And if you're tying multiple uh, of these green weenies, you can get, uh, you can take off like a bunch. For this one, I'm just gonna take a small piece off since I'm just tying this one. We'll go ahead and snip this off and so this is like a little trick that I like to do some people do this some people don't uh, what I'll do is I'll grab this piece uh, that I'm going to tie in and just kind of get my fingernails and pull a little bit of that chenille off to reveal that thread underneath so it's easier you can tie use that as your tie-in point basically so then we're gonna go ahead and do like a pinch wrap just so we know that we got the thread that's underneath the chenille walk down. I usually just wrap my thread up and down the shank just to even that out. Create like a nice even underbody. So once you have your thread back at the top, I just like to slowly or take a few wide wraps back so I'm not creating any bulk. And then for this part, you're gonna create like a small loop uh, for this loop, obviously the smaller the fly, the smaller you're going to make the loop, but it doesn't really, I guess the loop size sort of just, uh, it's sort of like a personal preference. I like my loops smaller, just so I know when the, the fish strike at the fly, they're going to get the whole thing in their mouth. So I kind of like that right there. So then we're going to go ahead and do like a sort of like a pinch hold on the chenille and hold the and do like a pin trap with the thread and then I just give it like two or three wraps here and then I move my thread back up to the top where the bead is and then you just take you can take counter wraps or you know regular wraps it doesn't matter really because uh, you're not like counter wrapping anything to keep it from falling off and then you don't you don't want to tuck too much up here because your thread's gonna bulk up and then you're gonna have like this weird odd shape so like as soon as it touches the bead is when I take the thread and sort of cut it off there. Take about three or four thre thread wraps, come in and snip off the excess chenille. And then again, I don't like up bu building up too much bulk once I finish that part. So I just come in with the whip finisher and start creating that hot spot with the whip finisher until I like the thickness of it. And again, hotspot, I guess the size of it is all preference. Um, you can, and then you can just pull your thread off from there. So now that we cut the thread off, we're just gonna come in with some UV cure resin. And just give that a nice little touch there. I just like throwing UV resin on all my flies. I just feel like it makes them a lot more durable. Hit it with a shot of UV. 
If you guys want to check out this uh, UV light, some of the ones on the fly shop sites are like, I don't know, I don't like them because they're small and like they don't, they're not powerful at all. This thing here was like, I think anywhere from 10 to 15 bucks. I'll, I'll leave the link down in the description on Amazon. But this thing, I mean, it just dries this UV cure resin in like literally 10 seconds. It's just, it's so powerful and it's a, it's a wide head. So, I mean, you can see how many UV bulbs it has there, but. Yeah, I'll leave the link in the description for this, but basically this fly is done. For this fly, I've always, again, I've always tied it with a red hot spot. Even if I didn't have this gold bead on here, just tying it with a red thread head. Some of my first wild browns came on a green weenie with a red head and no bead. So I think that's why I sort of always stuck with the red hot spot for the collar there. Definitely a good fly for fishing in the summer or just if you're, you know, this size here, a size 10 with a 3.8 millimeter tungsten bead, this is pretty much going to get down to even some of your deeper holes. So sometimes I'll pair this with like a nymph or just throw it itself. If I come to a run where whatever rig I have on currently isn't going to get down there, I'll sometimes throw this on or like a, a squirmy worm that has a bigger tungsten bead on there that's heavier so I can just get down there and get some drift through it and then switch back. That's gonna be it for this one. Uh, super simple tie, uh, definitely a good fly to keep around in the summer or for a, a stream where you're fishing deep pocket water, you know, there's gonna be some deep runs. Let me know in the comments any other flies that you guys would like me to see or if you just want me to tie some more simple patterns. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a like on the video. And until next time, peace.